Hello, everybody. It's Monkey Puddle. And, oh, I guess the squid just died there. <laughs> oh, poor squiddy. Anyway, uh, welcome to episode number six of Monkey Puzzle and the Crack Pack. And last episode, which I recorded just a few minutes ago, we overhauled our storage system and completely redid it. We had a whole matrix of resonant strong boxes here. And now we have an ME storage system. So really moved up. Got tons of stuff here from all our dungeon crawling below and some caving and ravining and stuff that I have done. So now that we've got all this set up, one of the other things we did last time is we made this tesseract and this ender quarry. So we're gonna go ahead first off and go set those up and get some more resources coming in here. So in order to do this, I have made a bunch of fences, a bunch of vanilla fences, because that's what we need to uh, set up these ender quarries. They're new uh, to me. I used them a little bit at the end of last episode, but I didn't actually end up recording that bit. So we're going to do it on camera for the first time today. So I'm going to go around and find a biome that I want to turn to dirt <laughs> underneath. I'll explain that in a minute and I'll meet you there. Okay, I looked around and I think I'm going to do it right here. Uh, below us we've got Tundra. Tundra, according to the ftbwiki.org, has Tanzanite, which is one of the four uh, four gems, I guess they are, that come with Biomes of Plenty. And those are used, once you have all four of them, to get to the Promised Land. And we'll do that eventually. And over here, the Maple Woods, they have emeralds, which, of course, are very useful. So we'll get a little Tanzanite. We'll get some emeralds. I think I'm going to grab this space right here, too, and get some sand, because I'm going to need that. Now, if you're not familiar with Ender Quarries, uh, they work differently than your standard buildcraft quarry. So let's put down an angel block. Oh, about, we'll grab it right here. And that's gonna be our starting point. Now an ender quarry, what it does differently is instead of digging out the whole area in a block, which would be terrible to start here with a buildcraft quarry because we'll end up with a big square pit right here, which would destroy this beautiful landscape. Instead, what an ender quarry does is it goes through everything and replaces all non-dirt with dirt, and it leaves anything natural alone. So this will be pretty much the same, except this will all be dirt. The trees will be unharmed, and the formations will still be the same. We just, uh, yeah, won't have sand or gravel or stone. Uh, instead, like I said, there'll be dirt. It looks like we'll get some quarried stone over there too we'll see and the advantage of these is that that's really it doesn't create any lag on the server or at least way less lag than the quarry does and you don't have to clean up afterwards as far as stopping flowing water and 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 such so the way you do this is we got to outline it with vanilla fences and i've got eight stacks plus right here in case i lose some and that is going to give me a 128 by 128 quarry. So that's like four buildcraft quarries. And you can, there's no limit on how big you can make the ender quarries because of the way it works. It only loads the chunks it's actually replacing at the time. Um, so it won't be too big of a load on the server as far as chunk loading, but it does chunk load what it needs. And it digs down in a column each time. Can I just do that? Yeah. Next time I do this, I'm going to have a computer, uh, a, a turtle that does this for me. But I'm too lazy to program that right now. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and make the whole perimeter of fencing. And then I will get back to you when we're going to place the quarry. Okay, there it is. That didn't take too long. So we got 128 by 128. Let's take out this angel block right here and go ahead and put the ender quarry in there. And hopefully that worked. Let's go ahead and can we click on it? 
Yeah, successfully established boundary. Mining at those coordinates. Zero block scan, zero complete. So what it needs next is power and a place to send items. So I think all I gotta do is place this Tesseract and we're good to go. It sends items and receives energy. So let's click this again. And not sure. If that, oh, <laughs> silly me. I didn't set a frequency for the uh, Tesseract. So that's something I definitely have to do. I think I'll pick uh, number 13 to start with. Maybe 17. It's even cooler. And that will be, we'll make these uh, private only because it will keep other people from being able to access the same frequency accidentally, I think. And so this is going to be. Uh, items and power and then so we'll set that and add that and then I have to go back and set the other one oops hit that that's the uh, toggle key for dimensional anchors so I have to change that key all right I'm gonna go ahead and set that and come back and we'll see if it's working Okay, back at the base. And if I do this right, let me see, owner only, items and power, click. If I did it right, stuff would start coming in through here. Um, oh, yep, yeah, there it is. There's stuff. We got cobble going right into the deep storage unit. Something went over here already. Got some sand, yep. And excellent, it's working. So let me go out there again and show you what it looks like while it's working. That's very cool. I purposely made this one a clear one so we can see what's coming in. All right. And there's a wither happening right now. The boys uh, started a wither fight. So let's see what's going on. Uh, looks like they got a little cavern going here. Hopefully, I won't regret this. I must be over here somewhere. Okay. First wither I've seen on this server. Get into hover. Oh, all right, we're already withering. <laughs> Where is he? Oh, there he is. Okay, time to get out of here. Whoa, get out, get out, get out, get out. Ooh, I'm gonna wither away. <laughs> all right, that was quick. Dad, you should teleport. Next time. All right, I didn't do too well there. I'm heading back. He's right there. I don't have sp good spare weapons and bows, so I have to... Uh, I'm going to see if I can dig straight down. Yow! <laughs> to my stuff. And just grab my stuff and then join the fray again. So let's uh, close this back up. Hopefully he won't be able to see me. And then we're gonna go back up. I brought a potion of regen with me. Let me see, that's up, that's down, right? So we're almost there. And there's my stuff. Okay, let's get down here and hide again. And we'll re-equip. <laughs> Hopefully he can't see me through this. And uh, let's see, let's put the good stuff back on. And get that in one and that in two. Uh, fill up saturation. Don't get hungry too quick. Okay, that's all the blackberries. Drink the potion. Get into hover mode. And, oh, I need a pick too. Okay, here we go. Oh, <laughs> all that and it's already dead. Okay. Well, I will do more of that later. Anyway, let's go back and check out the quarry. Okay, back at the quarry. And see, you can't see any damage happening at all. There is a sign 
of where it's working, there's these little ender particles that show up. Uh, just in a little vertical line. I'm gonna see if I can find them. But this whole biome should look pretty much intact by the end, which is pretty OP. <laughs> this is going to be four buildcraft quarries worth of stuff. So it's going to be quite a bit. And, you know, I can just build the fences up like this. I could have put them on the ground, too, if I had um, gone up and down. You have to connect them. So if you go up a block, you have to put one on top and then over. But that was too much work. I'll chop all these down when I'm done. I'm going to go see if I can find where it's working and just show you what that looks like. So if I go back and click on the quarry, it tells me it's mining at negative 678, 601. So we can go there. It's definitely working. It's 0.21% complete. So let's go to negative 678, 601. Oops. So it's over in this corner somewhere. Up oh, there it is. You see that little, these little particles right there? That's where it's working. So let's see if we can get to the source of it. So right at this block right here, it's going all the way down to bedrock and replacing everything that's not dirt or natural with dirt. And I'm not sure how it defines natural. Uh, if it works with the biomes of plenty stuff or not, definitely the vanilla stuff. I'm sure that these trees will stay. Um, but yeah, it, so it gets down to the good stuff right away. It doesn't have to take off the whole surface layer first, and it's going to basically do it one column at a time as it goes along. Well, the particles don't seem to come too often. The last I saw them, they're in the same place. I might not be giving it enough power. Yep, that's the case. Whenever I checked out my energy cubes and they are empty. So we have drained these completely right away, and it's basically just using the energy as fast as it comes in. So this quarrying, turns out, is going to take an energy upgrade as well. It's still working, but it's just going to take forever at this rate, and we won't have any power for anything else. So it seems like my next goal, my next mission, is to expand the power system. I'm going to think about that and come back to you. One other downside I just figured out is without power, the ME system is not working, which means things are just going to pile up in the ender chest. Oh, looks like we found the mine shaft down there, and it is picking up sand, so that's good. But yep, I'm definitely going to have to give it its own power system. Be back with that. Okay, well, I think I've got my solution. At least I'm going to try it. I'm going to go ahead and make some mechanism wind turbines these things. I went ahead and made more energy tablets and control circuits and enriched alloys so we can do this. Uh, so let's go ahead and put it in there and let's see if I can make four of them. There's one, two, three, four. Now these make power depending on how high they are placed in the world. So we're going to place them someplace pretty high. And I think if the calculations I did are correct, that they can make up to 500 RF per tick. And that would power, one of these would probably power the quarry nicely. Four of them would really power it <laughs> very, very well. So let's try this. Let's go ahead and we've made those. And if they're really gonna make that much power, then we probably need to upgrade the cables. These can hold 800 per tick, which is pretty good. Um, but uh, actually, let's just put that back and let's go ahead and upgrade up here to the Elite Universal Cable, which looks like that. So we can go ahead and make these. Let's make uh, eight of them, let's say for now. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, I guess that's all we could make. What were we missing? The elite. Oh, they have the basic in the middle. I was thinking they had the advanced in the middle. Oh, that is the basic. Okay, how many did we get? We got four. I want to make a few more. We'll need eight. Uh, let's make 16 for now. Throw it back in there. And then we want 
let's go back to cable and the elite cable there it is so i wanted about eight before so th there we go and let's take all this stuff and this is going to be a temporary placement um but i think this is the spot in the map where these going to go let's go over here to the top of our little alp pinnacle do you remember this place oops do i got my jetpack on i do oh but it's disabled that's not this is not a good place <laughs> for it to be disabled anyway it takes a while for the world to load in here but this pinnacle goes way down we're way above cloud level so this has to be high enough to get the maximum power for the wind turbines but we shall see i'm not sure where they should go uh let's go ahead and put them back here for now and like i said this is going to be temporary configuration i'm going to make this nicer once we build a base out here but uh let me yeah just make some space i'll have two of them over there and we'll have two of them over here let's give a block extra so we don't fall off uh so okay and i've made two more tesseracts so let's put the tesseract in the middle and then go ahead and set up these wind turbines and see what they look like when we place them kaboom so hopefully this is a high enough altitude put another one although that doesn't look very good huh they're too close let's separate those out a little bit Hopefully, I can just break this like that, and I got it back, good. And let's just give this a little bit more space. Um, we only have this much cable <laughs> for now, so I guess that determines how far these can be out. Uh, not really f that far, so we'll put it here for now. Uh, that's a little better. That's kind of wrong, but <laughs> we'll, we'll adjust that later. I don't want to go back and make more cable right now. And let me go ahead, put that there. And let's just open this up more this way too. And go ahead and place that down. All right, so hopefully that's generating a lot of power. We click on it, it is making 192 RF per tick. So that's pretty good. It's not quite uh, 250. I wonder if they even went higher, if that would do it. But I think this is going to serve our needs for now. So let's go ahead and configure this to, we're going to go to private only like we did before. Let's see, the last one was 17. So let's make another one. That is 13, I guess. And this will be wind power. Capitalize it nicely. Wind power. And we'll click that and we'll add it. And then for the configuration, we want it to be, it's sending, so that's items, no items, no fluid. And we want it to be sending energy. There we go. And we'll do the opposite on the other side. So hopefully that's it. And oh, turn that off. Okay. So this one, 192, 192. Let me get my little calculator. 192 times 4. That's 768 RF per tick. So that's a pretty nice addition and we could add two more on either side pretty easily so let's go back and come on through and place the other tesseract let's see i could just do a separate system i could just add it to the quarry that would be decent for now or i could put it up over here and have it supplement this whole system. Uh, let's do it, use it as a second separate power source for now. Ah. So get through here. And this one 
we're going to adjust for the items in power. We're going to have it not send energy anymore. So it's just going to receive items. So this is going to be a two pair of Tesseract operation for now. I'm sure I can do it better in the future. I could probably have this on a separate line or blah, blah, blah. Anyway, let me get back out to the quarry and we'll get it going again. Let me go back real quick before I go out because I had forgotten. I had switched this one off. So we want to make sure that it's operating. It's just receiving items. So that's good. We're good to go. I'm going back out. Okay, back out at the quarry. Switch to hover mode. Let's adjust this one first and make sure that it's it's sending items and it's not receiving energy. So that's just the item tesseract. And now we're gonna add our second tesseract and see if I can do this point. And it is gonna be set to go to the just the uh, owner only menu and we'll go to wind power we'll click that and configure this to be it's we don't want to do any items we don't want to do any fluid we want to just receive energy click it again just to be safe and hopefully that's working hey it's charging up whoa it takes up to a hundred thousand rf that's quite a bit and but it seems like it is storing more than it's using so that's pretty cool let's go back yeah if it's actually holding the charge that means we must have hit capacity oh nope it's using it up again i wonder how it does if it if it builds up the full thing and then uses it all again whoa sounds like a is that the wither sound? Something happened there. Okay, so now, oh, I see. It stored it all up before it started working again. And now it's using it as it comes. And we've gone up to 0.24%. And let's go check out negative 680, uh, 602. We should be receiving quite a few items now. And the great thing about these ender quarries is you get the goodies right away. Not all the goodies, of course, but you get since you're going all the way down the bedrock, you get a mixture of stuff every time. Uh, from the, the stone and coal and iron at the surface all the way down to the redstone and lapis and diamonds at the bottom. So let's go back and see what kind of rate we're getting from this. Back to the base. Wow. <laughs> That's loud. So I've been watching this for a minute or so, and it's working in bursts. But when it comes in, <laughs> oh no, there's that weather again. Stuff is coming in pretty quickly. So you can see a uh, number of things coming in here. Uh, quite a bit of cobble and gravel coming in. We're not going to get any dirt. And just to clarify, when I said that everything was replaced with dirt, it actually generates that dirt. It doesn't take it from you. And so that's kind of the OP part. Um, but that's just done as a practic practicality in order to keep the, the lag down. Apparently just changing the item to dirt prevents it from having a block update, which has the toll on the lag. So no block updating this block switching it's kind of a sleight of hand that happens because of this uh the the way that it works so that's pretty cool and of course you know i'm not going to capitalize on that i'm not going to go in there and then mine a bunch of dirt out because uh just we're not going to need it like that and there's plenty of dirt in the world anyway so it's not giving you extra dirt in a sense it's just kind of keeping the terrain intact anyway that's all that uh, justification. <laughs> anyway, this is probably working fast enough, but it's still not working at a constant rate. Those wind turbines were cheap enough. I think I can go ahead and just throw some more of those up on the uh, Alp Peak, whatever we want to call that place. 
and see if that uh, makes it even more constant. And just for science, I did an experiment and that's as high as I can place a block. That's 256. And then this was the highest these would let me place them. And they're still making 192 RF per tick, which is very respectable uh, amount of power, especially for free. And well, you know, it's using the wind. That's valid. So those are making as much as they need to down there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these off and put everything back together down there. Okay, I think that ought to do it. <laughs> we got nine of them. If that's not enough power, it'll have to do for now. So, and this is still a temporary configuration. And one other note is I noticed that when I hit record, the blades slow down quite a bit and they're way faster when I'm not recording. So that definitely has an impact on the animation. But I think that looks pretty neat. Should be enough power. Let's go check the other stuff out. Okay, stuff's coming in on a really good clip now. And I don't think that these are limited in Thermal Expansion 3, but I'm not sure. Hopefully these aren't bottlenecking all that power. We'll have to figure out figure that out. If anybody knows, let me know. But so far from my research, they're not supposed to. They're, I read that they were supposed to handle up to 10,000 RF per tick. So it's looking pretty good. That's quite a flow. I'm going to visit the quarry one more time, and then I think we're going to sign off. All right, and this is looking good. It uh, is maxing out at its total capacity to hold energy, which means we're generating more energy than it can use. So we could probably take this off now and run it through our main power system because we're probably generating the surplus at this point. So that's excellent. Click on this. Hey, we're approaching 1% complete. And that's, of course, you know, we're doing so much. And once we do the, these, uh, this thing, this capacity of four normal build craft quarries at their maximum, we'll probably have enough resources to do quite a bit of things. We used up almost all our resources getting this done. Not all of them, but of certain things, we were definitely maxing out, getting low on. So this is good. We're going to stock up and we're going to work on the modular force field system in the next episode. So get ready for that. I'll see you then. And I'm going to sign out now. And once again, thank you for watching. And special thanks to everybody who's watching now because they made it to the end of the episode. Once again, <laughs> this is Monkey Puzzle. And we'll join you later. Bye-bye.